So, so let's talk about the the twelve. I think it's about how long were you off work? About twelve months. Fourteen months. I was 14 off work. Months twelve months, off months, months work. in a wheelchair. Fourteen months off work in total. So I'm interested in the journey, one mm. mentally, but also physically. So yeah. th- there must, and we we kind of just touched on this a few moments ago, which I think you go through this chasm did some psychology years ago and you go when, when something major happens in your life you go through a chasm one is denial yep. then it's yep. loss and it's only when you start going back up at this level of acceptance mm-hmm. what was that over that 12 months what did that mental journey look like yeah the acceptance is the key 14 months sorry yeah the acceptance is the key it, it was that and you, you're right you've you said there's exactly the same thing i said earlier you know denial despair i called it at the time hopelessness despair but then acceptance as soon as you can get to accepting this is who you are the easier it is to then get on and 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 find a future for yourself um so for me i spent three months as an inpatient first in oxford then back in the royal barks and um all i had each day was my purpose each day was to get myself out of bed into the spinal gym and just exercise that's all i had just focus on that each day and I look forward to, it's bizarre, isn't it? I look forward to my, my food each day. It's little things, it's just little milestones, right? I've got this one little pleasure today, and that's my breakfast. A bowl of cornflakes with sugar on. That's my, that's my pleasure. And lunchtime, you know, I've got my lunch coming, great. And always have a, you know, chocolate sponge and custard or apple crumble and custard, whatever was on the menu. Custard, I love custard. <laughs> <laughs> Lashings of custard. And I always order an extra bowl of custard. <laughs> And I didn't worry about the calories because I was in the gym five hours a day exercising, whatever I could do. I was burning calories like you would not believe. And um, and even to the point where I would you know, wheel myself into the gym on my wheelchair and I would sit on there, there'd be these bikes called Medimotion bikes where you, you strap yourself in uh, and you can pedal from your wheelchair. And they, they, they're self-driven, so they, they will um, powered bikes so they can help you you pedal and it kind of helps to activate your legs at the same time um so i was doing that every day and i'd go and spend an hour on the bike go and do some something else go and stand in a standing frame literally strapped in just standing um because the more you can stand the more it helps to retain bone density in your legs so the worst thing is you know having time off and not standing and then a year later going oh my bone density is gone it's and my, my bones are so brittle you end up breaking your leg so standing doing things like that which is incredibly painful and especially when you don't have you know your glutes you, this is the other thing you don't realize your glutes your backside is one of the most important muscle groups in your body because it gives you stability without that it's really hard to stand even if you have good quads good back good, good core your glutes are really important and you don't realize how much you miss them they are such a vital part of your your body's stability um so working on activating those, did all kinds of exercises. I would, I would insist the physios come and spend time with me. I'd really, I'd harangue them, go, come on, I need, I need some time with you. So through the year, I spent every waking hour I could exercising, doing something just to trigger, to, 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 to kind of, you know, um, uh, activate whatever I could in, in my body. Um, so you had to have a level of belief. Yes. That it- you know once you've gone through the acceptance there must have been some belief which was i'm going to get back i'm going to get back as far as i can and the only way of getting there is through training it it started it started with the recalcitrance don't tell me i can't do this because i'm bloody well going to prove you wrong Uh, and then it's okay no actually i can do more i am more than this i can be and i will be more than this i don't know what that more looks like yet but i've just got to keep going exercise do whatever i can and i will i will learn week by week what might be possible um so i didn't go into it i didn't start the, the my exercise regime my, my whole year with any preconceptions just there's more to this than i am now that's all i had um except that the one thing i did want to do <coughs> was drive and um <coughs> excuse me so driving was really key for me because it's, you know, it's my passion um and when i came out of hospital in uh so the end of March came out of came out of the first first into full time inpatient care, uh, and um, I, I couldn't I couldn't drive I couldn't walk, um, but I then applied to what's called an RDAC a regional driving assessment centre to be assessed for hand controls, and um, so I ended up having a having a test, July I think it was something like that, and um, 
because I'd actually started to get back some movement in my in my legs. So from the thighs, I could then I could then move my my thighs. I couldn't really bend my legs properly, but I could lift my thighs up and push them down. So my glutes just about working, but I had my thigh muscles working. So abductors, adductors. So I could move my legs in and out and up and down, but I couldn't bend my knees properly. Um, so I said um, I went for an assessment and uh, tried different hand controls, you know, steering wheel controls, hand brake, hand accelerator, etc. And then I said to the chap, can I just try a normal automatic? He said, how do you mean? What well, can I just try a normal automatic? How are you going to drive that then? Well, I just use my right thigh to push the throttle and I use my left foot to brake because both legs work. I can left foot brake. Really? Why not? I've driven go-karts plenty of times. Let's try it. Okay, so we had her go around the car park for five minutes. He said, okay, let's take you out on the road then. Had half an hour driving around the road and he said, you're probably safer than most normal people. Went, great. He signed me off. You're fit to drive. Only two pedal cars. but And so uh, that was then, I can drive. Oh my goodness, I can drive. I've got my freedom. And that was so important to me. It gave me another, another, uh, you know, another reason to keep going. So of course, after what happened... Your driving license, your driving license got took it all, taken away. Yes, it right? did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So legally, when you have a spinal injury, you have to declare that. So my license was taken away. Yep, yep. Wow. which was a killer for me, of course, because driving is everything. Um, so you've got to go and read. This is what you're saying. This you've had to go and redo a test. Yes. yes. So, so you can you can get yep. your freedom back and go back yep. out onto the road. Yep. So I did that, and uh, and my license today says yes, I'm fully licensed for two pedal vehicles and I have restrictions on my license that say I can only drive two pedal vehicles. So, um, but there's so much you can do with that. Mm. Uh, so yes, so having that and continuing to exercise. So even at home, when I got home from my, from, from Reading, um, <laughs> weirdly they had, um, they, they uh, assigned a local physio to me to come and help me with home physio. And this chap turned up, bless him, didn't really understand my condition. Uh, and uh, he spent the first five minutes asking me to do certain things. I said, I've called Requinus syndrome. I can't do anything that you're asking me to. My things don't work. Just, there's nothing going on. Okay, well, let's try this. No, no, you're not listening to me. Things don't work. Nothing's happening there. Okay, well, let's try. I tell you what, we're done. And I sent him packing. Ten minutes I sent him packing. I said, you clearly don't understand my condition. You have no experience that's going to benefit me in any way, shape or form. So I called my GP the next day, who was absolutely brilliant. And, and the village I live in, Wicko, our GP practice is without doubt the best GP practice in the world ever. All the doctors there are brilliant. Uh, and my GP at the time, um, she wrote back to the Royal Barks for me and asked me to go be, be allowed back as an outpatient with regular visits for hydrotherapy and physio, etc. So, and they admitted me back on that basis. So I had to go back there three times a week. Um, which is a challenge, but it's still good to be able to go and do that. And my wife had to had to drive me there um, before I got my license back. And then when I got my license back, I could drive myself, get myself out into my wheelchair, out of the car into the wheelchair, get to the gym, go home. So I had some independence. So all this time I'm continuing to improve and, and find little ways of, of, of achieving more. So I still couldn't stand, I still couldn't walk or stand, but I had bits of my legs, you know, muscles activated, senses, you know, the top of my thighs, I could feel things, I could move. Um, I still had no control over bodily functions, so I would, <laughs> weirdly, I was having to wear nappies, <laughs> big boy pants. <laughs> um, so, I, and that was, that was, that was a challenge. You're I, laughing about it now, but I'm, I am, at the time uh, it must have been um, horrendous. Uh, yeah, not, not nice, no. not nice. When you have absolutely zero control, you have completely flaccid bowel and bladder, nothing's going on no sense no feeling nothing uh that was a challenge um yeah that was quite hard but with everything else that was happening i was thinking okay this bit's working okay so keep going a bit more a bit more it will come back it will come back i've got to believe so i, I just kept pushing myself every day so even when i was at home i saw i had a zimmer frame they wouldn't give me crutches at the time because i was too dangerous um, I had a Zimmer frame and I'd go out walking on my, with my Zimmer frame and I say go out, I'd go out in the back garden and I'd walk 10 metres, literally hook myself up my Zimmer frame and hip hitch and just, just try to move my legs to try and stand, get the muscles, whatever they could do, do. 
Uh, so I end up with carpal tunnel syndrome in both wrists <laughs> because the constant pressure on my wrist. So I end up having to go for injections to have that dealt with. Um, and then um, it was just it was just a constant battle through the year. Every everything was a hurdle. Everything was a challenge. Just so we had a we'd had a new uh, kitchen and bathroom built just before my injury. So literally December uh, 2010, it had been finished, and we had a shower fitted in the uh, next to our bedroom downstairs. And we said, right, leave the shower screen off, the, the, the you know the glass off, so I can wheel myself into the shower on my shower chair, so I could become independent. And that was important to me to make sure I could just live, cope, be independent, just be able to get on, and do things, so that. A, I prove it to myself. B, I wasn't a burden to anybody, my wife included. Um, and uh, just be able to do all these little things bit by bit, you know, it continues to give you hope. Each little milestone, each little achievement was a major success. And so every time you get, you know, to achieve something else, right, it spurs you on more. And that's how I, that's how I did it. That's how I survived. Um, and we got to December. So every, every year my wife and I go away to Hastings, something we've done for eons every december first weekend in december and uh and this particular year 2011 um so still in my wheelchair i still wasn't able to so so i could stand if, if i could if i stood with my with my zimmer frame uh, I, and by this time i was using elbow crutches um because i'd been i'd had a stint in state mandeville which I'll, I'll tell you a bit about in a second but um if i if i stood i could bend my right knee i could bend my right leg at the knee a little bit but i couldn't bend my left one uh, sorry other way around, I could bend my left one, I couldn't bend my right one, it's completely dead, nothing happening. And um, so we went to Hastings, and this year we decided to take the boys with us. Um, and uh, and they were still quite young, they're still, what were they, seven and five. And um, I said to my wife, I'm going to leave my wheelchair in the car. She said, what? No, no, you, no, I'm going to leave my wheelchair in the car, just humour me for the first day, so we got there on the Friday lunchtime. And the intention was to walk as far as I could. And then I said, well, grab a taxi. Or just let me use my crutches. I want to use my crutches. I want to force myself to be out of my wheelchair. And I walked over a mile wow. on my elbow crutches. I'd never done that before. It was just single-minded. I've got to do this. Okay, it took us an hour to get there, which it would have taken, you know, 15 minutes before. But I did it. I had to stop and keep going and stop and keep going and the pain through the wrists, of course, constant, you know, leaning on my crutches, the pain in my legs, but I did it. And we got to a pub called the Hastings Arms, which we go to every year. And I enjoyed this fantastic pint of Spitfire. Absolutely wonderful. And then another one. <laughs> right. And then I walked back in the evening, back to the hotel in the evening. How did you describe that feeling when you got to the pub to have that drink? Elation. Elation. Um, I feel emotional again now. It was... Um, Wow, I've been... done yeah, I've done this. Oh my god, I can walk, I can walk. And so that was probably the, the single biggest achievement, the biggest success, the most oh, emancipating of all the things I've done through the year, to be able to walk that far and to enjoy a pint um with my family. Um the only the only thing that my daughter wasn't there with us. My daughter is from my first marriage, she doesn't live with us, but I, I wish she'd been there to to see that with me. But nonetheless I had my boys and my wife and we were there and um brilliant. Had a had, we had three pints and I hobbled back. We walked up and uh, around the old town for a half an hour or so. I sat in a I sat in the bar, went out and a little walk around, sat down again, and then we walked back in the evening and I walked all the way back again. And then the following morning on the Saturday Again, we walked all the way up to the old town, and then that was it. I was done. I was spent. So we got a taxi back in the evening. Um, but uh, yeah, it was incredible. And then I, I, we got home on the Sunday night, and I was lying on the sofa. This is really bizarre. I was lying on the sofa and, and lying on my on my front. I don't know why I was lying on my front, but I was lying on my front, and I, I suddenly felt my right leg, my hamstring, activate. I thought that's oh my God, I can move, I can lift my leg. So my right leg, which I hadn't been able to bend, I could bend it. So lying lying on the ground and being able to bend my leg up like that, I hadn't been able to do. There just wasn't enough strength. So somehow walking had triggered my muscles to activate and work properly. So, yeah, so I said, that's it, I'm giving my wheelchair back. She went, no, 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 I'm giving my wheelchair back. I'm taking it back to the hospital. So 
uh, on the Monday, I called the hospital and said, can I bring my wheelchair back? And I did. That was it. I refused to have a wheelchair after that because I thought if I can do this, I'm going to force myself because I'm going to have to walk everywhere. It's just going to force me to get better and better faster. So I did. And, um, yeah. Wow. This is just incredible. This is incredible. What you've been through is unbelievable. But you've, you, but you've, it, it, you've, you've been so determined to make it happen. It's, it's like you've applied this. It's not even a positive mental attitude. It's just a determination that mm -hmm. is not going to beat you. Yeah. And yeah. you forced yourself, you forced your body to, to regain the ability to walk. Do you know what it is? I, oh. So when I was in hospital for the first time, I remember there was a young lad, when I was in, in the Royal Box, um, there was a young lad, must have been in his 20s, I think. Uh, he'd had a spinal injury and uh, he'd given up. He just, he wasn't going to the gym, he wasn't exercising, he wasn't doing anything, he was just lying in his bed each day. And uh, I remember him coming over on his wheelchair to come and chat with me. He said, how are you so determined? I said, because life has got so much to offer. There's so much to live for. And I realized then because I was of an age where I had, I had lived a life, I had seen and enjoyed and, and traveled and done so many things. I thought, well, I know what there is to offer. There must be so much more. Because he was so young, I don't think he'd appreciated what, what was possible. And so my determination, I think, was just, I do not want to give up. I refuse to give up, which is where I have, I don't know if you've seen my website, but on my website, um, my, my logo is never give up, ever. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to instill in my kids as well, never give up. So. And I think you certainly will. I think you certainly have. Like I 